and let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Baptism is our invitation to the eternal banquet of the kingdom. But like all invitations, it comes with an RSVP. Our response is found in the way we live our lives, in our gratitude for all that God has done, in our desire to serve God by serving others, and in our life of prayer and worship. Good morning, everyone. A very special and warm welcome to all of you who gather here today. A very wel uh, special welcome to all of those who gather with us by way of our video as well, those in assisted living facilities. We welcome each of you today to this celebration. As we come together, we do so as a community of believers, as individuals who come together this day, uh, not unlike that group who gathered with our Lord today in the gospel, who gathered with him at the house of the Pharisee. And today we receive a great lesson from our Lord, a lesson in humility. And so let us humble ourselves today before our Lord as we prepare to enter into these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind the sins of our past week and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are light and life. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came into the world to forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite us to that heavenly banquet. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, 
Let us pray. God of might and giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility, and you will be, more, and you will be loved more than the giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 1157. God in your goodness. shall rejoice at the presence of God. They shall exult with glad rejoicing. Oh, sing to God, make music to his name. The Lord is his name. God in your goodness, you have made a home for the Father of orphans, defender of widows, such is God in his holy place. God gives the desolate a home to dwell in. He leads the prisoners forth into prosperity. God in your goodness, you have made a home for the Pour down, O oh God, a generous rain. When you people languished, you restored their inheritance. It was there that your flock began to dwell. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched in a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and storm 
and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words such that those who heard them begged that no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the countless angels in festal gatherings, and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in a heaven, and God the judge of all, and the spirits of the just made perfect, and Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, Go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then he said to the host who invited him, When you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the cripple, the lame and the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. I entered the storefront for the very first time and was rather nervous as I walked through that door and the bell rang and I was greeted at the front desk by a young woman who was the chosen one. She was chosen that day to do a task that no one in this world would ever want to undertake. You see, it was the day before Holy Thursday, and I had been chosen that year by my pastor at my home parish 
to have my feet washed. And so I came up with the great idea to go in for my very first pedicure. This poor, poor woman was tasked with the responsibility of giving me a pedicure. Her life was never the same afterwards. <laughs> Not only was she uncomfortable with having to give me a pedicure, but I will tell you, I was extremely uncomfortable allowing her to do it. But after a while, I kind of settled in and it became a little more and more comfortable. And I think I even caught word that it once took her so long that soon afterwards she even retired. She just couldn't deal with feet any longer after looking at mine. But nonetheless, we finished the gruesome task. And I went to Holy Thursday and my pastor knelt down before me and he washed my feet that day and I don't think it is something that you can ever really get used to. Having somebody that I respected so much in my life kind of kneeling before me, washing my feet. I, I even took a moment and reflected this week and I tried to think to myself if there maybe could have ever been a situation in my life where I would feel comfortable with somebody washing my feet. And eventually it dawned on me that maybe at some point in my life, if I were too ill to be able to do that myself, I might allow somebody to wash my feet. But I think that in today's reading, I probably kind of liken it to just probably never be able to get used to the fact that somebody would be washing my feet. But in today's gospel reading, Jesus reminds his followers of the fact that things are going to be uncomfortable for us, that we are going to be entering into situations that are uncomfortable in our life. Whether we like it or not, we're going to be asked to enter into difficulties in this life. That in order to follow Christ, we've never been promised an easy life or an easy way out. That to follow him, there are going to be trials and tribulations. There are going to be hardships. In fact, we are going to even be asked to leave behind the things that we love the most to go and follow him. Look at his disciples, his followers, the ones that were chosen to be his closest allies. He called them from their jobs. He called Peter and James, those fishermen. He invited them. He asked them to leave their work, their livelihood, the things that they valued the most, a tradition that had been handed on to them from their family. He called people from their mothers and their brothers, their sisters and their family. He even said that sometimes your families were going to be the ones that were going to stand between you and following me in an authentic way and that you would have to leave them in order to walk with me. He invites them to a deep sense of humility, of turning away from all of those things in this world that may separate them from him. And he reminds them that in order to follow him, they must have within their hearts a deep sense of humility, and that there is no place of honor in his world except for honor that is associated with the virtue of humility. And so humility for the Christian becomes one of those cornerstone virtues. We see in our, in our gospel reading today just precisely how Jesus is 
misbehaving. And I think it's interesting in our gospel today because it's one of the very few times where we see Jesus kind of just sitting back and relaxing. He's kind of an observer, if you will, of the human character, isn't he? He's just sitting back and watching as he's at inside the house of this Pharisee. And he's watching everybody around him as they jockey for position. Everyone around him wanted that place of honor. They all wanted to be seen. They all wanted to be heard and listened to. They all wanted to be given the attention from the leading Pharisee. And Jesus reminds them. He reminds them that it isn't for them, it isn't for them to seek out. That place of honor is not for them to ask for or to assume that it is to be given to them. But rather they are to take a place of lowliness and humility. Preparing for my homily today, I read that humility has its roots in the term lowliness, and that it is oftentimes associated with the, the words earth and soil and ground and dust. And what a beautiful reminder that is. It takes us back to the very beginning of our creation from the origin of humankind itself as we remind ourselves when God told Adam in the Garden of Eden, if you remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. For we are reminded in our own humility that God is indeed everything. And that we are nothing. The great saint, St. Catherine of Siena, wrote as she prayed. She wrote the words that our Heavenly Father spoke to her. And, and he said to her, You are she who is not, and I am he who is. What a great reminder for us from the mouth of St. Catherine of Siena that we are to humble ourselves in all things. Now, these messages from Christ and from St. Catherine of Siena could appear to be depressing to the average Christian, right? You're like, Father Ryan, why are you so down on us this morning? My gosh, it's not even 8.30. It could be depressing for us, especially if all Jesus meant for us was to be miserable our whole life, right? Right? But we know Jesus doesn't want that. For Jesus teaches us that there is great joy in humility, that we can find true joy. And in fact, in this life, that is the only way we will ever find it. When we're willing to put others before ourselves and do away with that vain pride that sometimes creeps into our hearts, to do away with that arrogance that we sometimes walk away with, thinking that we all deserve that place of honor in this world, we will be filled with that joy when we walk in this life with that authentic sense of humility and when we reach out and serve others in need. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, how can I find how to live out this humility? You already know the answer. It's Jesus, right? Jesus lived humility perfectly. First of all, he lived it by becoming man, right? He lived it by becoming human. God did not need to do that, but he did it for our sake. He came into the world through the incarnation and he became man and dwelt among us. Secondly, he did it in such a humble way that he was willing to be born into a stable, right? He, be, he was born into poverty. He was born into a poor family, to an unwed mother. He 
was obedient to his father's will. He was humble to his father's will, even unto death. Jesus modeled humility to the very end of his life, and the most perfect image of humility that we have is right there. As he hangs upon the cross for our sake. In our gospel reading today, we have the perfect way towards humility. It says, rather than inviting those neighbors that are rich and wealthy, our way to humility is through the poor, through the cripple, through the lame, and through the blind. Now, we maybe don't have those individuals in our life, but I would argue that we certainly do. Whether or not we have financially poor people around us may not be the case, but we certainly do have people who are poor in spirit. Maybe we don't have people who are physically crippled in our life, but we certainly could probably find somebody who is emotionally crippled in our life. The lame and the blind, those individuals who are blind to the wonderful truth of our faith, we could find people like that around us. And so the challenge for us this week is simple. We look for opportunities to humble ourselves and to serve our neighbors in need. Let us pray for the wonderful gift of humility this week so that each of us may be repaid at the resurrection of the righteousness and that we may serve those who are in need as we become the hands and the feet of our Lord and Savior this week. So let us pray today as we bow our heads in prayer. Father, we know that none of us are 100% humble. For we are clothed in these mortal, feeble, fallible bodies. But we do know that Jesus is the model of one completely humble in both his humanity and divinity. He did not consider equality with you, our Father, something to be grasped at, but took on his personhood as a man and became obedient to death on the cross. We look to him as the supreme example of humility and obedience. As we clothe ourselves in your righteousness, we can overcome the pride that is ever before us. We recognize that no good thing can come from us, but all that is good comes from you. Remind us daily that the attitude of gratitude is the antidote for the feelings of pride. When we acknowledge that everything we have and all that we are is due to your merciful blessings, we are humbled and grateful to you, the giver of every good and perfect gift. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. So we stand with confidence now as we profess our faith together and say, I believe in one God.
with a deep sense of humility, we turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, for all who labor with the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, the forgotten, and the needy, that they may realize the fruits of their labor and the difference they make. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that its policy support and protect manufacturing efforts and jobs in our own country, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For volunteers and all who labor without pay, that they may be rewarded for their work in ways beyond measures, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, as they begin another year in school, and for their parents, teachers, and all who support and encourage them, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the safety and security of all our military men and women, for the restoration of peace and security for all nations, for the innocent victims of war, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this week, John Schneider, Thomas Joyce, Glenda Deonde, and Violet Pierce, and especially for those who remember at this Mass, Susan Forrester. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our heart, we pray. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and generous God, giver of all good gifts, we turn to you this day with these our prayers of petition, those that we have voiced aloud and those that we hold in the silence of our heart. We ask that you answer all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our preparation song number 679, Center of My Life.
Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice that you have made for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion from the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us 
to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, and let us offer each other a sign of peace.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song, number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom. You are salt for the earth, O people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people. Life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. You are a light on the hill, O oh people. Light for the city of God, shine so holy and bright, O oh people, shine for the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring